Hey guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring some products from Colorado Craft Company. This is Perfect Blend. And in addition to that, I am also going to be using another set from Chris Lauren that is called Teacups and Mice. I have used this one in the past. Um, and we're going to be talking about forced perspective in scene cards. So if you've never seen my videos before, I like to kind of lay out my stamps so I can see what's going to go where and how I want things to look. And you can see originally I had my little mouse in front of my cup, um, because, but he is smaller. So I, I'm going to switch that up and put him behind my cup. The reason that this works and that this still makes sense is this cup is huge in comparative to my characters, which means it has to be right up front. It has to be the first thing that you see. So it forces the rest of the perspective of the card, meaning this tiny little mouse in the back that's walking on the hill is now going to look much further away because he's on a small scale where my cup is on a big scale. And so the bigger scale things need to be in the front, smaller scale things need to be in the back. I'm working on Nina 80 pound solar white cardstock. And since my entire card is going to be colored with alcohol markers, I am stamping in intense black ink from Hero Arts. This is safe for alcohol markers. So here, the only two things that I need to mask are going to be my flower, and my butterfly because I want the butterfly to look as if it's kind of flying in front of the house. Again, closer perspective because this is a bigger butterfly. This butterfly is almost the same size as our mouse in the back. <laughs> so I wanted it to look like it was flying closer up. Um, I'm going to mask my uh, cup. Why couldn't I think of the bird cup? Who knows? Uh, and then here I'm trying to figure out where to put my mouse. So I know I need the mouse to be behind the cup because he is my medium scale. So my cup is big, my larger mouse is medium, and then my teeny tiny mouse is small. Um, it has to be behind the biggest object that is right up front in the foreground. So I've stamped my house, which is going to look a little bit further away. Um, stamp that down. Now, if I was going to be doing ink blending, like I do a lot of times, I would create masks for all of these items. But since I'm going to be doing it all with markers, I don't need to do that. I only need to mask the items that are in the foreground. So the butterfly had to be masked so I could stamp the house over it, and the cup had to be masked so I could stamp both the house and the mouse. House and mouse, huh? That's funny. House and mouse over top of the cup. Now, once that's done, I can remove my two masks, and then my entire scene is stamped. Right now, it looks a little bit funny because my little teeny tiny mouse in the back is kind of just floating in thin air. But before we do any of the rest of the coloring, I'm going to go in with my lightest color. I knew I was going to do green hills and green grasses. So I am mapping in those things. So for the rest of my coloring, I know what my scene is going to look like. Just going to continue that hill through the house, not putting the actual line down, just visualizing it to finish off the hill on the other side. And then from there, I'm going to put in my sky. There is nothing particularly spectacular about this sky. It's very easy to do. Um, and it's just going to be a little bit of color variation. So it looks like there's some clouds passing by. So it isn't just solid blue in the background. So I'm starting with my darkest color at my lowest point. And then I will just, and I'm telling you it is totally random, <laughs> randomly kind of put down some blue, bring it out further uh, in some spots, fill in some spots more solid. Um, this is something that is kind of foolproof. Like you can lay this down however you want, as long as you're going in the same direction the entirety of the time that you're doing it. So for me, that is um, horizontal. It's it's left and right. And I'm tucking some of the darker blue behind some objects, some of them, um, you know, just, just filling in the areas, knowing I have two other colors that I'm going to blend this out with. Right now, it's going to look kind of just like a scribbly mess. But when we go back in with our next color, which is our mid-tone, I am going to color over a portion of the color I've already put down. This is going to help them blend because Copics are transparent. And this applies for all alcohol markers. Alcohol markers are transparent. A lighter color will lift 
a darker color. And so because it does lift that color just a little bit, it's going to create almost like an extra color in our sky, which is going to help those things blend together better. Now, you certainly could do more of a hard line type cloud, but I find that these ones for scene cards work just as well, and it takes substantially less time. And again, out to my lightest color, I'm just going to be coloring right over the previous colors, getting everything to blend. Because um, alcohol markers blend in the fibers of your paper, your, the more saturation you have, the better your blend is going to be. So once that is done, I'm going to take my lightest green color and just fill in the background. I'm not going to do anything else with that yet. I'm just going to get that base color down before I move on to the more detailed coloring. So. Before we get, I mean, we're still going to be coloring, but before we get too much further along, I did want to tell you that in order to celebrate the upcoming, <laughs> the impending joy that spring will bring us all, <laughs> especially those of us in Ohio, um, is... Uh, Colorado Crafts is doing a sale. They're doing a 15% off sale with free shipping for the U.S. Um, and then a $10 flat rate for international shipping. And that is through midnight, March 4th. They are on Mountain Time. So midnight, Mountain Time, March 4th. And then the promo code you need is SPRING15. I will link that below um, in case there was anything you were like, I would love to have. Um from them or you've been saving up your pennies for them like now is the time to capitalize on the sale these two stamp sets these little houses from chris lauren are so cute and i actually have the gnome one too that i haven't even used yet but i've had them for a while and so pretty much just any i was looking for any excuse to to use them and when they announced that they were doing a little spring um set like you know, excited about spring, I was like, certainly I can make a spring card with what I've got. And the other ones, like I said, I've used them before. And actually I did three cards, I think, with the teacups and the mice. Um, I'm not sure if these, those were with alcohol markers or not. I'm not sure. I'll link it at the end in case you're interested in seeing it. These little guys are just adorable. So I own a couple of different ones and uh, I was excited to be able to get to use them. I will have to find time to use that little gnome house as well because it is also adorable. Uh, but clearly I would be drawn to this uh, little coffee urn because I love coffee. The sentiments in that set are totally adorable. The, the sentiments in the other one are good too, and they're a little bit bigger, but because I am a coffee lover, it says coffee and friends make the perfect blend, and then sometimes having coffee with friends is all the therapy you need, which ain't that the truth. And then the one I went with was um, Can't Wait to See You, because uh, I'm going to be doing some traveling in April, um, which is interesting for me, uh, because I don't leave my house, and actually we'll have a story about that in a little while, that I don't leave my <laughs> that I don't leave my house. Um, but I will be going to, in case either one of, or any of you are, are traveling, um, I will be going to uh, Creativation or CHA um, in the beginning part of April. And then I will also be going to Create um, in, what is that? The middle part of April. Um, so I have some some work things. I'm excited to get out there and uh, meet you guys and see other people in the industry. So I'm I'm super excited about that. Uh, but <laughs> there's a reason why I don't ever leave my house, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you about it here in a minute. Um, so all of the teacups in this set are flowers, and this one is the lily. I thought it would be super fun to kind of color it like, almost like a tiger lily. I should have put spot. I should have put spots on it. Why didn't I think of that? I should have done that. I should have put spots on it. Well, now it's just an orange lily. But if you do a tiger lily, you put you do the spots because that would be cute. But anyway, um, since I have this blue sky going on, I thought the blue is orange's complement. 
And so I thought that they would play very nicely together. Also, the orange um, is a pretty traditional color combination for the butterflies. And so I knew that I would be able to kind of carry that throughout the card. When we talk about scene cards, um, well, any of my cards really, like I talked to you guys about having that continuity of color so that everything is working well together and kind of repeating itself. Not too much though. You don't want it to be so that it's not interesting, but enough that they are working well together. They're good teammates. Um, and so orange and blue are very good teammates. For the, I, I apologize for not showing it to you. Uh, I always have all of my colors and everything linked below in the description if you're ever wondering what I used. Um, but this, I used a slightly darker green combination for the cup so that it would stand out against my grass. And I used a YG03. I used a G05 or 07, one or the other. They're pretty close on the color scale, honestly. And then a G17 and a G28 uh, for this combination. I'm not sure. I probably did show it to you and accidentally cut it out in the editing, to be quite honest. But so then I got that colored so it stands out a little bit more from the yellow green of the grass. But I still chose the yellow green as my lightest color. So again, they would work together and it wouldn't just be a completely different shade. For my tea house, tea house, coffee house, what are you? For my urn, coffee urn. Anyway, for the mice's house, mice, mouses, mice, mice's. What's happening to my English right now? Does anybody know? I'm not sure. Anywho, for the house. That is nice and benign for the house. I chose to color it white um, because I felt like I had a lot of other colors going on and it would be a nice neutral. And so I chose warm grays for this because then I could take those warm grays, apply them to my mice and they would look very nice with the warm tone of the orange. And so really when I'm coloring white, I'm just adding in the shadows. That's what you see me doing here. Um, just adding in a couple of shadows, especially underneath that window, around the door frame, um, to the, I like to put my shadows on the bottom left. Everybody does them differently. You do whatever works for you. I like a bottom left. Um, the bottom left portion of the spout, uh, I added a little shadow there. And this, those shadows are just going to help give it some more shape and dimension. Um, and then working all the way out to my lightest color, there still is quite a bit of white visible in this house because it is meant to look white. It is not meant to look gray, um, which I don't think this one necessarily does uh, because there's already so much color in the background. A lot of times coloring um, objects white, they do appear very gray until you put more color around them. Um, but this one's not doing too bad, probably because we already have the background in, honestly. So now that that is done, I'm going to move on to the browns. Um, for the kind of doorway and the woodwork around it, as well as the window frame and the very tippy top has a little window, like a porthole window. I'll be coloring that brown as well. And the mailbox, because it's all very clearly made out of wood and that was the intention. Um, the nice thing about the Colorado Crafts is the artist's color the images. So the people who drew it color the images and you can always find that on the back of their packaging. Um, so if you're ever wondering like what is this supposed to be or what is this supposed to look like, just flip over your stamp and look at the way the illustrator colored them and it will usually give you a pretty good idea of where things should be or what color they should be, especially in your more intricate images. That's always super nice to have. Um, so why don't I ever leave my house? Let's, let's talk about that. So I typically uh, don't do things for myself. This is, and it's not because of anybody else. Um, it's just, I think it happens when you're parents, like you're just always doing for your kids or you're trying to do for your significant other and take things off their plate. And so a lot of times, you know, the things that we need or the things that we enjoy just kind of get pushed to the background. And so one of the things that I enjoy doing for myself is getting a pedicure. I also get a manicure every now and then. Uh, side note, somebody did ask me to do a story time about how I do my nails and I will do that. So if you are the person who requested it, I will 
I will discuss how I do that. Um, but I do my nails myself and they are my natural nails. I don't do like gels or acrylics or dip or anything like that. It's just regular nail polish. Um, but I, <laughs> every once in a while I will go get a manicure because I do struggle with trimming my own cuticles. So I just go, they clean them up and I'm happy with that. Plus it's like a nice little, you know, little treat for myself. I have not gone and got a manicure or pedicure since like June of last year. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start trying to prioritize my things. Let's go back to the card. Um, so here I just added a couple little orange details to make the house just kind of pop a little bit. Uh, in hindsight, I probably would have also maybe colored the handle orange or a portion of the handle orange, um, but that is what I'm doing here. This is not necessary. It was just something that I did to just kind of bring in more color. So um, here I chose these yellows to color in the curtains because the lightest color is the same color that I used with the orange so they play nicely together and because they're next to each other on the color wheel they're analogous colors um they also work really well together um so that is how i chose the yellow i did keep it more on the like darker yellow like a, a mustard or uh, a more golden yellow um but you can do whatever combination you want and i use that for the curtains and then for the placemat so um, oh, the pet, the pedicure. That's what we were talking about. I was like, what is, what is happening? Um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to try to make this more of a priority for myself. So I went online. There's a lady that I really like and she's always booked out forever. So I looked for her first and she was booked out until September of this year. So I was like, all right, well, I ain't waiting until September. Like I got to do it. I got to strike while the iron is hot and I'm willing to take the time to go do it. So I just looked for new, like the soonest available appointment. And for me, that was Monday. So I booked the appointment. The appointment was for 3 p.m. Um, so I would just be able to take, just cut my workday a couple of hours short. Wouldn't, you know, throw off anything with my kids or anything like that. Um, so I booked the appointment. <laughs> and the day of the appointment, it is like sideways freezing rain where I'm at. And I was like, of course, couldn't be a nice day. No, no, it could not be. It has to be miserable. But this is Ohio and it is what it is. I'm not missing this appointment. So I make sure that I leave with enough time to get there a little bit early. I get there early. I walk up to the door and on the door, it says, um, due to COVID-19, we ask that our clientele wait in their car and call us to let us know that they're here. Now, to be clear, I have no issue with this. I It does not bother me in the slightest. I will wait in my car. So, but I have walked to the door in the sideways freezing rain. So now I walk back to my car in the sideways freezing rain. I get into the car. I look up their phone number. I call them. Nobody answers the phone. It goes to a answering machine. So I wait 30 seconds. I call back. It goes to an answering machine again. I leave a message and say, hey, I am here for my three o'clock appointment. Then I sit and I wait and I wait and I wait. And at this point, it is now 2.58. I have tried calling four times. And the fourth time I called, I could no longer leave a message. The message box was full. So I will get out of my car again through the sideways freezing rain to knock on the door. Like maybe something's wrong with their phone line, whatever. I knock on the door. Nobody answers the door. I go back to my car in the sideways freezing rain. On their website, there is an option to send them a message. I send them a message because here's where the rub is. They have, when you book an appointment, that if you do not show up for your appointment, they charge you for 50% of the thing. If you cancel within before 48 hours, they don't charge you, but if it's after 48 hours, you still have to pay that 50%. And I'm over here like, this is so expensive. I am not paying this 50% because you people failed to open your door when I arrived. So I send them a message and I let them know 
Like, I will wait in this parking lot until 3.05. At 3.05, I am leaving. I have tried calling five times. I can no longer leave a message because your message box is full. And if you charge my card for a cancellation, I will dispute it with the bank because I did not cancel my appointment. You failed to provide a service. That is the message that I send. I'm sitting in my car. I am waiting. And in my head, I am thinking, this is why I don't leave my house. <laughs> because while I would not have a pedicure or a manicure, I would be at home and I would not be enraged. <laughs> so at 3.02, they call me. Hi, Kelly, you called about your appointment. Yes, I did. I did call about my appointment. So I walk up to the door and I say to the girl, your message box is full. If your procedure is that people have to wait in the car and call you, then you you are required to answer your phone. And she was like, oh, we were, you know, we were busy in the back. And I was like, all three of you, all three of you who are working were busy in the back and could not answer your portable phone. Really? So then the girl who was doing my nails, like came up to get me and she was like, how are you doing? And I was like, I'm a little irritated with your procedure. And she immediately starts to defend the COVID-19 thing, which is not my issue, which is what I tell her. I have no issue waiting in my car. I have no issue. Whatever you need me to do to make you guys feel more comfortable, I will I will do that thing. I have no issue with that. My problem is, is if this is the procedure that you've put in place and you want me to follow the procedure, then you also must follow the procedure, especially when you're telling people if you don't show up, we're going to charge your card, but then you don't answer your phone when they're here for their appointment. Like, do you see how this could be an issue? And eventually we got over with, you know, and it was fine. And we proceeded, you know, with me paying too much money. And I don't mean that, like, I'm not willing to pay for people's skill set. I totally am. That's why I go to somebody else to do it because I know I don't have that skill. Um, But to me, like, paying for a manicure, pedicure in my area, like, it their prices are on the on the higher side, but I go there because I like that one girl. Well, in conversation with the girl who actually did my nails, um, found out that that girl's not even there anymore. So now uh, my wonderful husband talked to another girl that I used to work with who also sees her and now told me where the new place is she's at. So thank God I don't have to go back there I, I, again. Um, <laughs> but I was just like, this is why I don't leave my house. Uh, But nonetheless, I am still excited to be getting out of the house and seeing some crafty people in April. So hopefully that process goes a little bit smoother than the other process. So here, what you've seen me do is I put in a little walkway. I just thought that it would be cute and kind of break up the scene. But if you're not comfortable doing that, you could totally just make all of this grass and that would be fine. In addition to um, like the kind of vines and stuff that they have growing up the side of this house, There's also um, these little areas of grasses kind of sitting on top of the doorway and on top of the window, there's a little flower box. So I just really kind of dotted some color into these areas so that I would have some multiple tones. And then later on, I will add in some detail to make it look like there's flowers. Um, So once these are done, then I will move on to the grasses. You guys have seen me do grass in multiple videos because I do enjoy a good scene card. (laughs) Um, So I do have ones that are a little bit more in depth on the grasses. We'll just briefly talk about that. With the grasses, I wanted the grass, um, first of all, I wanted to set my shadows and ground my images. So I'm going in with my darkest color, putting that underneath the house. uh, And that's kind of drawn in uh, with the stamp, that ground. So I just added some darkness underneath it. And then I also added some darkness underneath my little mouse and underneath my cup. Um, Then from there, I started with the flicking technique and I started flicking in um, some little grass blades, but I'm only doing it in the front portion. So with the front portion, you would definitely see more detail than you will with this hill that is set way in the back. You could still do um, like flicking grasses on the hill if you wanted to. I chose not to, but you definitely could. I would just make them shorter and closer together because again, you would see less detail. You're going to see more of the individual kind of blades of grass closer up. 
um, with this type of scene card just because of a, a pers natural perspective. So I go all the way out to my lightest color to make sure everything is super blended uh, and I'm happy with the way that it looks. If you want it to be less blended, um, I would just go over it once. I wouldn't do it twice. And then I'm going to go in again with my darkest color and I'm going to set the back boundary for my hill. I'm not going to do a ton of darkness at the bottom of the hill because um, I don't want my whole scene to be dark. Um, I want it to be lots of, you know, like the hills are alive uh, with nice bright sunshine. Um, and so I just did a little bit of darkness to set that boundary and then I will fill it in with um, the colors can like consecutively darkest to lightest as we move up with the lightest color um, being on the very top edge of the hill. I hope that that makes sense. We've made a lot of scene cards together. If you're if you're new here, um, there's definitely plenty of other scene cards that you could also you know watch. Just to, if there's something that um, you didn't get, feel free to ask me below, and maybe I can refer you to one of those other videos that maybe explains it a little bit better, or I can just try to explain it in the comment. So now that that is done, I am going to go in with my white gel pen. I added some highlights to the stamen in the cup. I also added just a couple of little almost like commas um, that would be like highlights on top of the rocks in our little pathway. And then I'm going to um, go in at a diagonal the same way that I colored in the light blue on the planes of glass, which would be reflecting the sky color. That's why they look that way. Um, so I did some highlights there. And then the uh, way that we're going to make the flower, like it looks like there's actual flowers in there, is by just doing a couple of little dots of white. This is going to create the look as if there are white flowers growing in all of that greenery, which is just another fun detail you can add. And then um, adding some detail to the darkest outside section of the butterflies so that they look more like monarchs. Um, and then that's going to be all the, the white detail. For the sentiment, I chose this can't wait to see you because my friend Tina is actually going to be helping out the same company that I'm helping out at Creativation. And she had sent me a text message um, that said, like, you know, thanks for putting in a good word for me. Super excited to see you. And so I thought that this would be a fun one to kind of mail her. So I stamped that down, trimmed it out. I did go around the edges with a black marker just to make sure that it did look black and you couldn't see the white on the sides. And then I'm just going to adhere this down flat. You certainly could pop it up if you wanted to, but I didn't think it needed to be. So I put that into place. And then the last thing that I am going to do is, of course, add the shimmers because, you know, I love the shimmers and my friend Tina loves the shimmers. So why not center some glitter, honestly? So I added that to the window panes, to the butterflies, to my little flower cup and um, kind of like dotted along like that same greenery with the flowers. I just kind of put in a couple of dots of glitter and then that is it, that's the whole card. So um, again, I will link that sale below if you are interested in shopping it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you learned a little something and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.